Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Raleigh. We are so glad you're joining us for this video. This evening at 5 p.m. we will live stream the Holy Eucharist from the high altar into your home. You will be present with us in mind and in spirit and in heart, and you will be fed with your eyes and your ears and in faith. We invite you to join us for the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. After the live stream, we also invite you to participate in what the ancient church called a love feast, an agape meal. Take bread, olive oil, grapes, whatever you wish, say a prayer, and join together in a ritual meal in memory of Christ. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a sacrifice for us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply unto us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Hello, friends, and good morning. Over these past many months during the COVID-19 pandemic, like you, I have found myself waking up every single morning to troubling and difficult news. It's everywhere, and it has a cascading effect. The media and all sorts of news outlets highlight the numbers, the violence, the culture, death. Everything is getting worse. Everything is changing, so it would seem. It's enough to bring us down and give us a sense of loss and hopelessness at times. I don't know about you, but I've certainly felt it. And couple that with the fact that during this time we have been unable to gather together as a community of faith to worship God, to support each other in person. There is real separation and real loss in what we normally do week after week. And just as it seems to set in and take over that hopelessness and sense of loss, we are reminded to not be so fast in our conclusions. It is as though God is saying to us, not so fast, my friend. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us about something so very priceless, something so very precious, something that we long and hope for during a time like this, something we are taught to pray for, heaven. He says the kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. We are reminded of the little and unexpected things of life, which often matter the most, the eternal things. So often it is those small, little seen or regarded things in life that ultimately mean the most. A tiny seed, a hidden treasure, a fine pearl, just one. And sometimes it is those things we simply take for granted that are priceless. But why is it so hard for us to recognize this? What is the attraction of those other more prominent things? Does it really have to come down to us losing something to understand its true value? To lose something of value in realizing what we've truly lost? I believe the message here is much more complex. But if our hearts and our souls desire this priceless pearl, we must sell everything. And by everything, Jesus means us ourselves, not just words, not just visuals, not placations, because it is ourselves, it is you, it is me. We're the ones that get in the way. The ego, the image, the selfishness of humanity. Just like last week's Gospel, sometimes we are the very weeds that get in the way of our own living. This is wonderfully illustrated in the capture of the ring-tailed monkey, one of the hardest animals to capture in Africa. Now, I certainly don't condone capturing uh, wild animals, but I do believe this is a good lesson for us. For the Zulus of that continent, it is simple. They've been catching this little animal with ease for many, many years. And the method the Zulus use is based on the knowledge of the animal. Their trap is nothing more than a melon growing on a vine. You see, the seeds of this melon are the favorite of the monkey. And for the Zulus, they simply cut a hole in the melon large enough for the monkey to insert its hand in its arm. And it's just large enough they'll reach in and grab the seeds inside the melon. And the monkey will stick its hand in and grab as many seeds 
as, it's can, as it can, and then will start to withdraw its hand. This they cannot do, because their hands are filled with seeds, and their hand is larger than the hole in the melon. Therefore the monkey will pull and tug and screech and fight this melon for hours. But they can't get free because they cannot let go of the seeds. They refuse to let go and they're trapped. We do this. We do this. Even to the point of destruction. Self-destruction. We have a hard time recognizing the simple and small things and letting go of that which consumes us. Our desires to be successful and important in, in all that we do, even at the expense of that which is most precious to us, even at the expense of living life. And it feeds into our desire to be right about everything, criticizing and attacking anyone who may disagree with us, or perhaps someone who has a different view or opinion. And God forbid we enter a political or cultural conversation these days. God forbid. So what is it that gives us hope in these times of great separation on all fronts? Seemingly a civil war amongst brothers and sisters. The Apostle Paul says in Romans, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the common denominator. This is the good news. Jesus and His love for us, for you, for me, no matter who we are, we are all created in the very image of God, the same. It is only ourselves that get in the way of seeing this priceless opportunity, our selfish ways. We are the ones who cause the separation. Not necessarily another, not necessarily the virus, not necessarily politics. It's us. What we say, what we do, it all comes back to our own hearts, to our own words, to our own actions. And this is the good news in these troubling times, that nothing, absolutely nothing, will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Nothing will keep us from the priceless kingdom of heaven which is so much closer than we know and realize nothing except one thing, ourselves. If we don't get out of the way and let those small things become the great things. And what does this look like? A wise woman found a precious stone while traveling and hiking in the mountains. She found it in a stream. And the next day she met another traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. And the hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. And she did. She did without hesitation. And the traveler left rejoicing in his good fortune, as he knew this stone was worth a fortune, and it would give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said. I know how valuable this stone is. But I give it back to you in hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me this stone in the first place. This is the small seed, the hidden treasure, the pearl of great price, the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ, and the priceless offer of the kingdom which will save us and our opportunity to search and find the real truth. This is our hope. 
This is today's message. May our hearts truly seek this godly wisdom in these times, knowing we are not, and we never will be, far from the love of God and the priceless, precious kingdom. Amen. In peace, I bid the prayers of this people for the cares and concerns of the church and the world and for all the people in their daily life and work. For those who are endangered by war, for our enemies and ourselves, that all people might respond to your love and open their hearts to reconciliation. For this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for the Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry in Newton Grove and the members of that community who struggle during this different, difficult time. May they find hope. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We pray for all who have died, especially those who have died during this pandemic, alone and afraid, and those who died in war, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.